I'm Salen and welcome to Kroisoi, the Adventures Nature Tree Identification Workshop. Join me as we wander through the North Wales countryside in search of many deciduous and non-deciduous trees. We'll be learning about their value to wildlife and also how to identify them. Here we have the older tree, a tree which can grow to a height of 28 metres and live for approximately 60 years. It thrives best in moist, damp conditions such as marshes and wet woodlands and can commonly be found growing near streams, lakes, riverbeds and ponds. Unlike other trees which rot when waterlogged, the older tree actually hardens and becomes a lot stiffer. Its roots also help prevent soil erosion and therefore is important to protect rivers and streams from being sedimented and being clogged up which can lead to a decline in fish and other species. You can identify an older tree by its small brown cones which are the female catkins and stay on the tree all year round. The male catkins are long and light green and appear before the leaves sprout from the buds. The bark is thin and grey and can crack with age and the leaves are leathery with serrated edges and quite small. Here we have the tall and graceful ash tree, a common tree in the UK. However, as ash dieback seeps in, is it to be erased from our countryside forever? It can be identified by its pale grey to brown bark, which deepens in the cracks as it ages. In winter, it can also be identified by its flattened twigs and black velvety buds which grow opposite to each other. It will flower before it leaves, forming spiked clusters at the end of sticks. And when it leaves, it will form on one stem with three to six opposite light green oval leaves. For a, for a female to produce the famous ash trees or seeds, there must be a male ash tree in the vicinity. And these will form at the end of sticks where the flowers were and will float down, spiralise down to the ground. In Norse mythology, the ash is known as the tree of life or a drazzle and the first man was said to have come from the ash tree. It is also sometimes known as the Venus of the Woods and the Druids revered the ash tree as sacred, occasionally forming their wands out of its slender branches. It, it creates perfect habitat for many species of wildlife, for example wildflowers, as its open airy canopy will allow sunlight to reach the forest floor and wildflowers to grow, such as wild garlic and dog violet. Bullfinches love to feast on their seeds and owls and woodpeckers will nest in the tree trunk itself. Ash dieback causes the leaves to fall and the crown to die back, usually resulting in its death. It is thought that tens of thousands of trees will die, potentially reshaping the UK landscape forever. And many plants, animals and insects that rely on this tree will also be under threat. You can recognise ash dieback by strange random sproutings which come off the trunk and in summer dark patches will form on the leaves then wilting and turning black hanging off the trees almost like the, dark, the ash keys themselves. When the tree is in full leaf the ends can also sometimes look very bare and almost dead another sign that the tree potentially will be suffering from ash dieback. It's thought that a small percentage of these trees however are resistant to the disease and scientists are currently working on identifying which trees these are, rescuing their seeds, and will hope to repopulate the ash trees before it is gone from our countryside forever. Here we have the common beech tree, often known as the Queen of British Trees. Mature trees can grow up to 40 metres tall and they thrive in humid habitats and well-drained soils. The bark in winter can be characterised by its distinctive greyness and quite smooth and horizontal lines. The buds, which usually stay on around all winter as well, can also be distinguished by their torpedo shape and reddish brown colour with distinctive crisscross patterns. You might also be able to identify a beech tree in winter or early spring by its leftover beech nuts from last year's fruiting. Due to its dense canopy, few plants can survive and thrive in a beech woodland. Only shade resistant plants such as the bluebells, the orchids and coral root bittercress are among the favourites of the beech woodland. Its nuts and seeds are eaten by mice, voles, squirrels and little birds and is also a favourite of the rarer wild boar which is sometimes found in the UK. Here we 
are the black pot tree, an early to blossoming tree. It grows up at a height of 6 to 7 metres and lives for almost 100 years. It is commonly found on scrubs, marshlands and woodlands, but it's also used as a hedging plant for its dense, thorny appearance. It is distinguishable from the hawthorn tree because the black thorn will flower much before it leaves, whereas the hawthorn tree will leaf and flower almost at the same time. It is notable for its antioxidant-rich, small, dark purple fruits, which are perfect for slow gin and any other winter recipes. It can also be distinguished by its quite smooth, dark purple bark and dark purple twig. When it leaves, it will have oval-shaped leaves, which are again quite dark and green. It is notably a witch's tree, and it is said that witches used to make their wands and staffs out of the wood of the tree. But when you are out looking for the blackthorn tree, just notice if there's any old berries that are left. They'll all be crinkled up like this, a sign that some little birds have left them behind from last year. It is great for nesting birds, and some species of butterfly will only lay their eggs on the thorn of the blackthorn tree. Scruffy and loud tree is named after its habit of splitting and cracking and how loud the sticks are when they snap. Mature trees can grow up to a height of 25 metres and it's one of the largest willow trees. You can often find it growing by lakes and river banks and is often planted to stabilise banks and dikes and its leaves are popular with moth caterpillars. You can identify this tree by the sticks which make a large cracking sound when snapped and yellow to brown hairless buds which are pressed close to the sticks. These will turn into catkins and males are yellow and the females are green, which will then form, once pollinated, into white fluffy seeds which are dispersed by the wind. The leaves are oval shaped and similar to that of the white willow, so it can be difficult to tell them apart. The bark also forms deep cracks as it ages. Catkins of the cracked willow provide an early source of nectar for pollinators and birds love to roost and nest within its branches. Planting willow next to streams and riverbeds is also great as it helps to stabilise the soils and decrease soil erosion, in turn keeping our rivers and streams clear. Here we have the elder tree, a very well known and loved tree. It can grow to a height of 50 metres and live for about 60 years. Witches are said to be able to turn themselves into elder trees and it is bad luck to cut down the elder as the elder mother will seek revenge. The wood is toxic to burn and it will create plumes of quite thick greeny smoke when placed on an open fire. You can identify an elder tree by its corky, quite green bark which usually has fungus growing out of it. Um, its leaves form in five to six pairs of leaflets with serrated edges and its well-known elder flowers form in bunches of creamy white five petaled flowers which are very pungent smelling. These will then form into little purple, black, quite dark berries which are perfect for elderberry syrups. Elderflowers is also used in things such as elderflower cordial and to make elderflower syrup and are quite medicinally valuable. Here we have the hazel tree, a tree or shrub which can live to about 70 or 80 years of age. It is distinguishable by its pale brown, quite smooth bark, similar to that of the silver birch, but it's not as shiny or as, or as white and definitely not as papery. In the spring, it will form catkins. A male hazel tree will form little yellow catkins and a female tree will form harder red catkins. It can also be noticed when the leaves come out by light green, quite soft leaves with toothed edges and it is a favourite among small mammals and humans alike for its delicious little hazelnuts which form in the autumn. Coppicing hazel has been an ancient custom as coppice hazel was used to make fences and the bases of roundhouses and is commonly used these days in basket weaving. Coppice hazel can look like poles such as this
basil is great for wildlife as it allows more sunlight to reach the forest floor, in turn allowing more wildflowers to bloom such as bluebells and wood anemones. A coppice hazel tree is also great for ground nesting birds such as yellow hammers and night jars which are quite rare to see these days. Here we have the common hawthorn tree, an iconic hedgerow species due to its dense thorny habit which is also perfect for nesting birds. It can be distinguishable by its knotted brown twisted bark and slender sticks with thorns at the end. It is some of the first to leaf in spring, beginning with tiny little light green leaves which darken later on. And shortly after this, brilliant pale pink to white pungent flowers will appear in clusters at the edge of the sticks. These are great for pollinators such as bees. Even later on after this, tiny little red berries will appear, which are antioxidant rich and perfect for migratory birds such as field fares and red wings. It can grow up to a height of 15 metres tall and can survive in almost any soils, but particularly prefers habits such as this where it's open and can have a lot of light. Um, you'll, you'll often find it standing alone in farmland as farmers used to believe it was bad luck to cut a hawthorn tree down as it is known as the fairy tree and the fairies would seek revenge on him. Here we have the very well known and the festive evergreen holly tree, characterised by its bright shiny green spiky leaves and bright red berries which is a festive favourite among people and birds alike. Its bark can also be seen as being smooth and shiny with brown warts which come off it. And mature trees can grow up to 15 metres and live almost up to 300 years. It's a favourite among birds as its berries are a source of nutrients throughout the winter. However, the missile thrush is well known for guarding the berries and making sure that other birds can't eat them. Mice and dormice also like to feast on the berries and hedgehogs love to nestle underneath the root systems. It is rich in Celtic folklore and mythology as well, as its evergreenness was a symbol of magical inspiration to the Celts throughout the long dark depths of the winter time. And in Celtic mythology the Holly King rules through half of the year, all the way up until the winter solstice when he gives up his crown to the Oak King. Here we have the Great Oak Tree, known as the Pedunculate or English Oak Tree. Oak trees can grow to a height of 20 to 40 metres and tend to shorten with age in order to extend their lifespan. Oak trees can also live up to a thousand years of age but tend to live about 200 to 250. An oak tree or forest can support more life than any other native UK tree species. Even its leaves support biodiversity and it's the second most common tree in the UK after the birch. support more life than any other native UK forest. It is host to hundreds of insect species, in turn being the food source for many birds. In the autumn, mammals such as badgers, deer and squirrels love to feed on the acorns, and the leaves break down to rich leaf mould which is loved by invertebrates such as the stag beetle. Bats also love to roost in the old woodpecker holes underneath loose bark and in turn feed on the rich supply of insects underneath the leaf canopy. You can identify an oak tree by its quite wide spreading branches which form the crown of the tree, sometimes ending up as a dome. The buds will form in small clusters at the edge of the sticks and then the, these will form into leaves which bunch out, which will be about 5-10 to 10 centimetres long, light green and have rounded lobes. The cracks of the tree tend to deepen with age as well and it's also recognised by its fruits, the acorns. These start off green and then turn to brown as they ripen falling to the ground. These are loved by small mammals such as squirrels and dormice and you also might be able to identify an oak tree in late winter, early spring by the leftover acorns which are scattered on the forest floor. Our native oaks are under pressure like never before. They are declining at an unprecedented rate due to stresses such as pollution, drought, pests and disease. This is called acute oak decline and occurs when the tree is too stressed out. Insects and fungi will then move into these stressed out trees, causing it to decline even further. This has occurred in Europe for around 200 years. 
However, more frequent environmental changes are making the problems much, much worse. Symptoms can include a general thinning of the crown, which can happen quite frequently in about two years' time, um, and a dark red bleeding of the stems in the bark. Companies such as the Woodland Trust, for example, are attempting to combat this by planting as much oak, oak trees as they can in areas where they will naturally regenerate, making sure that the next generation of oak trees will be more able to deal with environmental stresses. Rowan tree, often known as the mountain ash for its high altitude and the fact that its leaves are very similar in that of appearance to the ash tree. The only difference is that the leaves tend to be smaller with toothed edges. It can be distinguished by its silvery grey, quite smooth bark and tiny little um, purple hairy leaf buds that form at the edges of the twigs. Its flowers are quite dense and form in clusters of creamy white five petaled flowers. Um, male, uh, the rowan tree has both male and female parts and therefore doesn't need much apart from pollinators in order for it to be able to fruit. Once it has fruited, it will form where these flowers have been, clusters of scarlet red vitamin C rich berries which are a favourite amongst the birds in the autumn. The seeds are then dispersed by these birds and the rowan tree will spread far and wide throughout the land. Mature rowan trees can grow to a height of 15 metres and live for 200 years. It is extremely tolerant of pollution and therefore planted in urban areas to help regulate oxygen levels in busy towns and cities. It is also a favourite of caterpillars and moths such as the Welsh wave. In European folklore, the rowan tree is said to be a very protective tree and a sprig of rowan carried at the midsummer solstice is thought to help protect you from evil and malevolent spirits. Here we have the silver birch tree, often known as the Lady of the Woods. It can reach a height of up to 30 metres and is one of the first trees to leaf in spring. It can be characterised by its distinct of silver white bark which can form a paper-like appearance and harden with age at the base. When it starts to leaf it will form tiny little catkins with bright green tooth-shaped triangular leaves which turn to bright yellow in the autumn. It is a favourite in fertility and love rituals throughout history and in an old Welsh custom it's for a man to gift a woman that he loved a garland of birch twigs and for her to do the same if she felt the same affection. It's also amazing for improving the soil quality as its widespreading roots will attract nutrients which are otherwise inaccessible and return to the soil when the leaves fall to the ground. It is also home and habitat to some 300 plus insect species which feed on its leaves. Here we have the sycamore tree, a broadleaf tree which can grow up to 35 metres and live for 400 years. It has since been introduced in the Tudor era around the 1500s and since then has colonised many local and British woodlands, forming shelter, food and shelter for wildlife such as aphids and small mammals. It can be identified in winter by its pinkish grey bark which is quite smooth when young. However, as it grows older it cracks and forms plates such as this. Its twigs are also smooth and pinky grey with tiny little lobes at the end. In spring it will form flowers which are greenish yellow in appearance and spiked at the end which will turn to, which will turn to five lobed leaves similar to a field maple, so try not to get confused when you're searching for them. Mature trees are extremely tolerant of wind and are therefore sometimes planted in coastal or exposed areas to make an excellent windbreak. They are also excellent pollutant resistant and therefore good for planting in towns and cities as street trees. In Wales, the wood of the sycamore tree was used to carve love spoons, decorately carved wooden spoons given as love tokens and gestures. Here we have the yew tree, one of the longest living native trees. A mature tree can reach the height of 20 metres and it is not considered ancient until it reaches 900 years of age. It was commonly planted in the medieval period as its wood was used to make the famous English longbow. 
Yew trees can be found forming the understory of beech woodland and it is also used as a hedging plant as its dense foliage creates perfect nesting habitat for, for birds such as the goldcrest and the firecrest. You can find yew trees growing in many churchyards across the British Isles and it can be distinguished by its red brown peeling plate shaped bark which is similar in appearance to that of the sycamore tree. It is an evergreen and therefore its leaves form similar to that of pine trees forming in dark green pointy needles. It flowers in March and April and male flowers are yellowish white and female flowers are small bud like and scaly. Unlike many other conifers which disperse their seeds as cones, yew trees protect their seeds by encasing them in bright red fleshy berry like substances. These are poisonous to eat so don't accidentally eat any. I hope you've enjoyed this Adventures in Nature tree identification video and have found it fun and informative. And remember there are hundreds of types of other trees out there so I hope you feel inspired to go out and try and identify them. Remember to collect any bits of the trees that you can while you're out on your walk, such as a bit of bark or a twig with some buds on it or any fallen leaves and catkins for example and bring it along to the workshop later on. And thank you guys for watching and I'll see you later on in the workshop.